Welcome to the Come Join the High Life Podcast, home of the hustlers, the innovators, the gifted, and the honorable, where we stay high on love, high on impact, high on faith, and high on energy. So if that sounds like you or what you represent, you're definitely in the right place. Welcome to the Come Join the High Life Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Come Join the High Life Podcast. I am Mr. High Life Film. And I am Tramika. Yes, and we are here today again on another beautiful day. We are on day, what? 10. 10 of the 75 Hard Change, y'all. Y'all see my eyes? We're going to get to that later, but today we got one of my great friends. Um, She's a, a buddy of mine. We... I, I love her mindset. You know, we, we read a lot of books together. We're part of some communities together. Um, and we always have a, a great conversation. Her paradigm is unmatched. So I wanted to bring her on today. You know, I like sharing my friends, y'all. So today I have my friend, Coach Alicia Wells. What up, Coach? Hey, let's go. Got no pump on <laughs> How the coach got the pom pom. I thought the, I thought the chili, she the coach, the chili, the, the you, hey, everything. You have to be. You have to be. You got to come with the energy. Okay, whatever works. Yeah. So how you doing today? I am doing pretty good. As you just mentioned, the seventy five day hard challenge. I'm on day ten as well. We started January first. So yeah. yeah, that thing will take you through roller coasters, emotional roller coasters. So yeah. today. Day 10. Okay. It's it's no joke. Um, I have done other challenges before, but I really like this one because I want to always get better. So okay. that was my reason for getting into it. But boy, that thing will challenge you. You think it's easy, right? Read 10 pages. What? Shoot, I read chapters. Like I eat, okay. I, you know, my diet is pretty good. That'll be fine. Drink water. Yeah, I drink water. Not at the same time, every day, no days off. Hold on, days speak, off speak about that. hold on, y'all. Hold on. hold on, wait, hold on. Great, <laughs> yeah, I put the pinky up. Too. All right, we, we for all the listeners, we had to we had a pause for a water break, real quick. For a quick but, water um, break, tell, tell the people who you are and what you do. I know we all into the we got into the water and set it for hard. But you know what though, well, before before she does that, because she is on day ten, and a lot of people don't make it past day three. So the fact that you are on day ten, we're gonna have to yes, yes, we're gonna give it up for coach because that is amazing. See, this is our second time around, and you know, <laughs> the first time it was definitely a challenge. But once we got through it, we was like, oh, it feels great. Yeah. Right. So at first, you know, it's it's a it's a challenge because the consistency is real. You have to do it every single day. You have to do five things consistently every single day. And like you said, it teaches you discipline. Sure. Discipline. Whoop your butt. Okay. So this okay. was my first time and I and I made mistakes. I said, so this next year when I do it, because it's gonna be a year before I do this again, I have tips. And reminders like, hey, don't do that. Like, I didn't have a plan. I just said I was going to do it, but I should have had a plan. <clears throat> However, I am Alicia Wells. Thank you so much, you guys, for inviting me. I appreciate it. And um, I love your hustle. Um, absolutely. Like, you get me stirred up sometimes on a morning meetup, and I'm like, let's go. So, I'm so happy to be here. I am Alicia Wells are also known as Coach Alicia Wells, and I help service-based entrepreneurs to have a more organized and profitable business through my boss mindset frameworks. So I am a nerd, <clears throat> okay? So that's what sparked my love for books. And I'm talking about any subject, I will dissect it. I like to talk about it. And um, anything that I do with my business, I always write it down. And I'm writing it down and um, finding where the problems are. Because one day I'm turning this over to someone, right? Because I'm not going to continue to do this mundane task. Mm. So that is the big thing that I teach <clears throat> beginning entrepreneurs to build your business, to be able to hand it off at one time. I mean, whenever that is. So I'm huge on 
describing a business um, or anytime you see a CEO, they don't work that much. <laughs> Once they built that thing, it's up to the manager. <laughs> it's up to, you know, whoever they have appointed to follow out what they have built. Okay. And also the help. And we know the help, um, <clears throat> you know, is managed by the manager, right? So I like to think of those as mindsets when we're solo entrepreneurs. So when we're building our business, we have to build it as a CEO. Awesome. We have to make sure we have our systems in place. Absolutely. And, you know, you talked about right in your systems down or right in everything down that you're doing your business, you know, for small business owners or um, people that are just now getting into business, like how important is this? And should you write down everything or should you write down, like explain to us that process? The process is as soon any type of work that you have in your business, anything that you sit down and do, right? That's a task, okay? We know that you have like the goal, the vision, right? Of what your business is. But there's lots of tasks that you have to do every day, right? And it's probably the same thing over and over. And sometimes you do it without thinking, right? Because you got good at it because you do it every day. The way I teach is do it once, write it down, perfect your, um, the system, see if there are any um, bottlenecks in the system, if there's anything that may slow you down or takes too long, okay? Then the next day, you may find a shorter way. You may, it may take you five minutes less to do that particular system that you have, right? So I do this or write down those things that you've learned that you do because you're gonna hire someone to take over that task. Or nowadays, if you create a system or a task, you can give it to AI to do for you and automate it. So you can you know, really <clears throat> plan your business, right? And not just doing a job every day. That's so important. Yeah, definitely, because if not, you can, you can definitely delegate stuff away and then it don't get done how you want to do it. And then guess what? You're right back to being the help. And that's something that I, I definitely struggle with as an entrepreneur, as you know, being a photographer. Um, my business is more based off of my my skills and right. um, being able to tell someone, hey, take this and edit this for me so I can go do more stuff. You know, that kind of like that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you, like how important <laughs> is the delegation part? Like how do I need to just learn the basics of of the thing and then give it off to someone because I just don't want to do that no more? Or do I really need to learn this thing? So, you know, I don't have to be, I can, I can kind of like let it go, but kind of like over the shoulder approach. Right. Well, and some people may disagree because um, I've heard pushback from this, but me- Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, Mr. Highlight Films. I know you're enjoying this episode, but I just wanted to pause for the calls real quick and let you know that this episode is brought to you by Highlight Films and Photography, the number one real estate photography company here in Jacksonville, Florida, where we specialize in listing photos, investment photos, 3D virtual tours, aerial photos, and everything real estate content creation related. So if you're a realtor, you're a broker, you're a course creator, or you just need some more content to get you some more clients, Hey, this is the place to be. You can check out some of our work at www.comejointhehighlife.com. Come join the high life. Now back to this episode. Right. Well, and some people may disagree because um, I've heard pushback from this, but me, myself as an entrepreneur, and I have been an entrepreneur for 10 years or more. And I would say be ready to give it over to someone else, right? Even if it's, if, if it's a service-based business, right? Learn everything in your business, everything. And maybe it doesn't have to be in depth, but learn an overview. So you can teach someone, because I'm very particular about some things and I have like an eye. So being able to understand and articulate that to someone else, right? Like now we're hiring a lot of VAs or assistants um, and 
they don't quite understand our vision because we don't even know what our vision is, right? So how can you articulate that to someone else? But when you have those core systems in place, which is a mission statement, vision statement, where you want to go, you know, what this looks like, you know, a, a style sheet for how you want things to look. Mm -hmm. If you're clear and when you train someone, they know exactly how you like it and be okay with correcting and saying, oh no, that's not the way. Okay. But this is, this is what I want. So mm -hmm. it's important to be very clear. Yeah. I was going to say that because I was going to add to that because when you, you know, dealing with VA, someone had a language barrier, you kind of like, they don't understand our American sarcasm. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just being very clear. Now, what I've learned is that the communication, it helps you once you, it's being clear about what you're doing, knowing how to do it, but being able to explain to a, a five-year-old, like my son, he helps me sometimes with my 3D scan. I do 3D virtual tours and I had to explain to him, you know, how to move the camera, how to push the button. Oh, it's not working. I mean, you need to go do it again. Like I had to be clear because if not, I could just say, all right, son, you go in here, you, you scan this house. I'll see you when you're done. And then he come back and he be like, dad, I broke the camera. And I'd be like, well, dang. I and now I'm yeah. mad because I didn't, I wasn't uh, communicating more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very, a good valid point that you said that you got to be very clear on your business and, and where you're going and what that looks like. Because if I'm just working for you and you just don't have a vision, I'm just here to get a check. I'm not here to help right. you. Oh, you know, there yeah. you go. Exactly. So yeah, just being very clear and understanding, you know, and just it's okay. Cause I am not the best communicator. Right. I think everyone thinks like me. Right. So if I tell my husband, Hey, can you go to the store and get, you know, say, you know, whatever the thing is, can you get some milk? My husband's going to come back with milk. Right. I didn't say I want almond milk with vanilla and you know what I'm saying That's so what I'm saying. you have to be very specific and be okay with um not being right right you know um as a leader or a person you know you're you know the leader of your business or whatever be okay with not saying it correctly and just say oh I you know I, I'm sorry you know I apologize I wasn't clear on what I wanted or what my vision was. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you want to grow a business, like you said earlier, your mission statement is ultra important. Your vision statement is what ultra doing, important. Yeah. Yes, what like it's imperative to have <laughs> because if you don't have it, clarity is going to be, you know, a hinder. It right? yes. So when you don't know, absolutely right. And anything that you may hear or come across will grab your interest because you don't know what you want or you'll say well maybe I or up oh, let me get this program and you never use it so that's for me um like a thing like I know what I want when I show up for the morning meetup you know say um per se and there's someone in you know that comes on a speaker um if it's not for me it's not for me not that they didn't have value I know where I'm going. I know, you know, what I should be studying <laughs> and mm -hmm. what I'm concentrating on my business. So I know like now's not the time to, you know, to invest in this, but yeah. I'll keep that on the back burner. That's because, you know, I have clarity and, um, you know, we're in a room full of business people and sales people. They'll sell you all day long if you let them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So For sure. when it comes to, because everyone is not organized, you know, and sometimes you're either just naturally organized or you have to learn how to be organized. So for, you know, people that's not organized and that's all over the place, whenever they hear a great idea, they want to, you know, uh, act on it. They may hear another idea. They want to act on that. So every opportunity they kind of want to act on, right? Because maybe it's good, but like you say, every opportunity is just not for you. You have to stay focused, right? So yeah. what are some of the things that when, when it comes to being organized, what are some of the things that you can do or should I, yeah, that you can do, um, to stay organized or to, you know, exercise, uh, staying focused on the task. 
well, um, you know, we're in business in general, um, like, you know, back in the day, 10 years ago, it was like multitasking. Like, that's the thing to do. You got to multitask. You got to do this, do that. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. I fall victim to that sometimes <laughs> and have a couple of windows open, but you really are not giving your attention to the task at hand when we do too much. And that's kind of like, you know, the old folks used to say how, you know, you're a jack of all trades and, you know, but you're a master of nothing. That is so true. Yes, we can be good at a lot of things, but once you concentrate on that one thing at a time and give yourself structure, you're going to do it well. And mm -hmm. that is the thing. You want to do it really, really good. Just like pra practicing, um, you know, singers, um, vocal cords or you know an instrument it's the same thing stick to one thing at a time mm -hmm. and also I wanted to point out if you are an entrepreneur and you do it all right I'm marketing I'm sales <laughs> set aside blocks of time so mm -hmm. me my magic number is 90 minutes so for 90 and that's for me that structure it's just like 90 minutes I'm going to concentrate on nothing but marketing mm -hmm or whatever you're doing, give yourself that time. And then that's out. I'm out. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Time blocking. The oh, yeah. That has helped me a lot. That has helped us in our business with. Cause it's been some know, time. time I've, I've been Ooh. working on my photography and we, we have photography. We do uh real estate, estate and life, life insurance. insurance. So it's sometimes where she wants me to help her with her, uh, maybe her insurance stuff. Yeah. And I'm editing. I'm like, hey, holla at me. And I, I need about 30 more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it, we, be, we, don't, we don't agree. We were like, I need you just for this. I'm like, baby, I just need, I got to finish this for 30 minutes and then I'll be all yours. So I learned how to book him. Now I got to book him, you know, when I need an appointment. She definitely books me, y'all, which is, it sounds funny and, you know, but it really helps me because mm -hmm. I'm just a, I'm a Pisces, I'm a photographer, I'm a creator. I mm -hmm. will float. I will yeah. float, I will wing it. And I'll be okay with it. And I'll just be there. And you won't even know I'm winging it. You think I'm so prepared. But yeah. just having someone yeah. around me that keeps me accountable. That's why I love being a part of the morning meetup. That's why I love being a part of the the, the, the live, the uh, virtual book club that they have in the morning meetup as mm -hmm. well as our yeah. book club. And because it's just constantly, like like Alicia said, you always seeing someone doing something. Mm -hmm. And it's always something productive. Like it might be something that's different from what you do. But you're mm -hmm. seeing them moving. They're doing. They're taking action. They're doing it scared. I see right. so many people in our community do stuff scared. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't know what the world they were going on. Even but, the do it ugly brand. Yeah, but you look online and they they look like you know new money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you see us online. It's new money. All you see is everyone highlights on online. Mm -hmm. But you know, right? The backs on the back end, we're in here in these groups and we're we're asking questions to each other. We're we're in there crying, telling why this ain't work, how we didn't get this deal, mm -hmm. that you know, and that's the what really helped me was seeing people struggle so that it kind of yes. like you know that I'm not in it on my own. You know, I do. Right. I'm not the only one that mess up. I'm not the right. only one that's not organized. Exactly. Because <laughs> we usually see the facade like on Instagram, you know, on social media, right? The cool part that everybody wants you to see. Facts. And then there's the real deal. Absolutely. And, um, work. and you know, that's where always learning comes in, you know, being a reader, seeking, being a seeker of knowledge. Uh, you know, we're reading a book now that's um, Outwitting the Devil and it's talk and it talks about poverty and it talks about fear and how if, and it talks about having an indefiniteness of purpose. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you are fearful, that's where, that's the devil playground right there. He all up and through that. <laughs> That. However, you know, just overcoming our fear and executing. Yeah, yeah. That's the one right there, yeah. you know, taking action and executing. Because once you do take action, once you do execute, you're going to learn what needs to be improved as you go. Okay. And you're going to learn from, you know, your peers and your surroundings mm -hmm. when you keep the right people around as well. That's why being in a group, you know, more than meet up and, you know, mentorship is yeah. crucial. It yeah. uh, Absolutely. It can make or break your business. Um, no matter what business you're in, um, constantly learning, 
um, seeing what's new, what's old, what works, what doesn't work and being open and not being in the place of, oh, I know that. I know that. Yeah, I already know that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know how to do it. That is the worst place to be when you're mm. an entrepreneur or, yeah. you know, a human in general to think you know everything. You hear me? That yeah. part. Right, I got a question for you. So yes. you are the coach. You coach yes. them so well. You're, you're the coach's coach. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I just wanted to know how important to you is reading, how important is mentors getting the right mentor how important is investing in your craft like for how important is it for if i get a coach that that coach is coachable like mm -hmm. you know how important is it when you're picking the coach you know that oh. is an amazing question and i close my eyes because i love it um i am an avid reader i have been for many many years um and every time i get a break i'm picked like i have two on my desk right now as you know um that you know and I constantly next five moves. That's that book right there. Your next sure. five moves. Uh, it's somewhere. It's somewhere up here. Yeah, but um, I'm constantly looking back to them as resources when I'm creating things. But it is, yeah, that's what's up. That's sure. what's up. So it's wow. the page is falling out. Of this one. <laughs> look, look, mine highlighted, written on. <laughs> Love Patrick Bet David. Yeah. So it is very important with business or in life to read, to read and understand and not only read, but implement the things that you have read in books. So it's so important. And as far as mentorship and coaches, absolutely that again. And I, I think I said online one day, the amount of money that I've spent on mentorship and um, coaching is probably if I add it up, is the cost of a luxury vehicle. Um, that's because I value um, education that much. And learning from a person who made many mistakes and are willing to teach me. And then that's cool because compounded on what I already know, you know, like that's amazing when you talk to a mentor and you sit down and then you immediately understand what they're talking about because great minds link up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whether you sit down and you talk to, you don't have a clue what they're talking about, right? Because they're at another level and you may miss stuff. Me, no, 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 no. <laughs> and if I don't understand, I'm like, hold on one second. Let me write down that word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being a student of life is going to take you a long way and going to have you to level up. Yes. Being a student of life. Yes. Look, pencil, look, pencil <laughs> drop. I had a shot <laughs> pen on that one. No, but it's, yeah, it, it's the truth. It, it, it really is. Um, investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. And like I say, I am a coach. However, I have hired coaches at different times in my life and they help me to understand things that were like, I didn't know that I didn't see and that would call out things. And I'm like, Oh, I do that. Wow. You're not going to see that yourself. It takes somebody else to push you. Mm -hmm. I remember a coach really quick. She told me, she said, you know what? I keep hearing from you. You don't like stuff. Cause I would say, I don't like that. I don't like that. And she said, you just don't like stuff. And when she said that, I was like, <laughs> That was my thing. Like I would always say, figure out a way not to like something to avoid doing the task. Mm. So during that, I was able to evolve and just say, you know what? I don't got to like it to do it. Mm. That's that discipline. So do you think that, you know, at that time you were closed minded? I wouldn't say closed minded, but I was comfortable. Comfortable. Mm. I was comfortable with what I knew. <laughs> and when she would say something new, like, hey, you need to do this. And I'm like, no, I don't like doing that. It doesn't matter what you like. Like, who cares about what you like? Well, the you know what I'm saying? So yeah. when you say you don't, it, you know, what I came to realize is I was saying I didn't like something because I wanted to stay in that little bitty box that I built for myself. And it was so comfortable, had all these little nice things in there but when you're trying to be a leader you can't be comfortable at all 
get really gotta be we gotta get comfortable getting uncomfortable. That 100%. So that's what I learned at the time that was valuable. Yes, yeah. Very valuable. Nice. So, so I also, um, it was something you said the other day. You were on live. And when I tell you, it just did something for me. I'm getting chills right now because I'm about to say it. You and have to remind time, me because I, 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 I know, just I'm gonna tell you. Time. Every time I say it now, I get chills. And you said it at the beginning of your live. You said, you took a sip of your water. You said, I'm going to feast today. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's it right there. Me and my son were actually sitting and um, I was I was watching your live and he was sitting next to me. And you said that. I say, son, that's what that's it right there. That's it right there. Whenever we're having a bad day or we feel like we're not at our best, or we we just feel we feeling ourselves that day. We're gonna say, I'm a beast today. That's yeah. our new affirmation. I say new, you put it all like new affirmation activated. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and that was just cool, you know, just to hear that. And it you you probably didn't even know that. That you know, you were just you know on there on there doing what you're supposed to be doing, your Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. getting on live, you know, doing what you, what you told yourself you're gonna do, holding yourself accountable, and you affected me and my son. Mm -hmm. And that just goes to show you sometimes you gotta show up because you never know who you're showing up for. You're not mm -hmm. you don't always show up for yourself. And that was something else that you said during the live. And I know you're doing the um 75 hard challenge right now, and it just I just wanted to talk wanted you to talk about. What lessons have you learned from the 75 hard, like about showing up for yourself? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, you guys, it's your lady, Tramika, and I know that you are enjoying the episode. But however, why don't you have life insurance? You've been thinking about getting life insurance for how long? You've been putting it off for how long? No worries. I'm going to get you right. Click on the link below and I am going to run you and your family a free quote so that you can protect your family. You can protect your assets. You can protect your business and what is of value to you. All right. No GoFundMe needed. I am protected. Click on the link below to get your free quote. Back to the episode. And it just, I just wanted to talk, wanted you to talk about what lessons have you learned from the 75 hard, like about showing up for yourself mm -hmm. yeah this time around it was more so well you know as far as challenging myself to get better is not feeling like doing something that's another thing you know remember I was talking about I don't feel like you know I don't I don't like that this is another level to it I don't feel like it I would do that I don't feel like it I'm not doing that today hmm so that's where I learned, like I learned, I met my mind, that gap on my own and just said, like, I say that a lot. I don't feel like it. On a 75 day hard challenge, you can't do that. You can't say what you feel like. You can feel so like it. Learning. You can feel like it. You can start over. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. You can be undisciplined and inconsistent. Right. But I, I'm not made up that way. So I just <laughs> said, I have to, um, really not pay attention to that thought pattern, those emotions that come up um, for business and being able to work through it. And most of the time, that mindset only lasts for about five minutes. Mm. Get over it quick. And just keep, yep, just just do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Discipline, yep. like you said. I think uh, Mike Tyson said that. He said, uh, discipline is doing something that you don't want to do, but doing like you love it. And, yeah. and, and then it's also a quote that we always say, do something today that your future self will thank you for. Girl, I used to be 45 and I look back today and I'm like, thank God this dude got his big old butt up and started walking. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. So so yeah. how important is it for you to, you know, like you just said, you know, showing up for yourself every day, even not only just physical in the business, in, 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 in relationships, which are, you also, we didn't get to talk about it, but she's also married for mm -hmm. how long? S say it one time. 28 years. We're going to have to do the pom pom for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. We, need the, we need some sirens and all that. I want it all. I, mean, I want it all. Yeah. I mean, that is a great accomplishment. I mean, y'all might think of it like, you know, we, oh, I just love him. I, I love her. We're going to mm -hmm. stay together. But, on the outside looking in, 
like you say, a coach is going to see, you know, what you can't see. And from the mm-hmm. outside looking in, that just goes to, that's like a testament to me to let me know that, you know, mm-hmm. just, just stay focused and yes. work on your communication. And once you find your partner, love on them and stay, and like y'all work to grow with each other. Like you talked about uh, getting two books. Mm-hmm. You say you buy one for yourself and you buy one for your husband. In mm-hmm. your mind, you buy it for your husband. Yeah. <laughs> that same thing. So when you said that, I, it was like a confirmation to me, like, that's that's how it's successful marriages. I don't only look for people how successful they are. I look for different aspects of their life. Yeah. So a successful yeah. marriage. If I want to have a successful marriage, I need to buy my spouse a, a book. But when I buy right. the book, we both read. We're going to dissect this book and we're going to talk about it. Yes, absolutely. I'm. I'm. I mean, that is me. Um, for me to be a coach and to be who I say I am, I have to have a successful marriage. Mm-hmm. Period. I mean, it's not perfect. However, we work on that thing. Mm -hmm. If not, if I say I do this as a business for business entrepreneurs to help keep them organized, how come I can't do that at home? Mm -hmm. That's my thinking. Like it's bigger than business. It's how do you show up in life? How do you show up? Being able to take an L in public if my husband say something and knowing, oh, we're going to talk later. (laughs) That part. <laughs> and she's gonna say it like that too. Oh, we're gonna talk later. <laughs> Love but it. that takes, I mean, that takes mastery and self-discipline to be able to do that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It takes a lot. Yeah, yeah. But it, that's it, just it, what I do. And just learning that over the years, um, that's how I want to be. Every time my feet hit the ground in the morning, I want to be able to grow and be a better person every day. Right. Yes. Right. One percent better every day. Yes, yes. I love it. You know, um, this has been like great conversation. Um, I'm talking about just, you know, being consistent. We talked about being consistent, being disciplined. We talked about um, having your mission statement and having your vision statement, being organized as a business owner. Um, also, you know, I love the fact that Whenever you buy a book for your husband or for yourself, you buy it for your husband as well. And I think that that is ultra important because, you know, that's just part of growth. And when for, you know, the people that is looking for a relationship or may be in a relationship, if your spouse is not growing with you or at least attempting to grow with you, that's a sign, you know. Um, and for you being a coach, I mean, even if you want to kind of elaborate a little bit on that, you know, for, um, people that's in a relationship, I know, I don't know if you're a relationship coach, but however, still, uh, individuals that is looking for their partner to grow while they're growing as well. If you Yeah. Want. Yeah. I, I am. I don't claim to be a, uh, a, a coach of relationships because every relationship is different. Um, and it can get pretty tricky. Um, <laughs> so I like to stay in my lane, but. Hey you guys, it's your lady Tramika, and I know that you are enjoying the episode right now. But however, if you are not a part of the community, How You're Learning High Life Book Club, make sure that you go and join the community. It's a community where we get together every single day, Monday through Friday at 12 o'clock noon, and we read, y'all. We read books that's gonna take us to the next level in our journey. So join the community, Facebook, it's a private, group all right how you learning high life book club and i'm looking forward to seeing you there back to the episode say for instance if you believe that your spouse is not growing at the rate that you're growing um it's okay to me that is okay because we're all humans you were brought up differently you have different you know background you know like i grew up with both of my parents in the home my husband grew up with a single mother Um, so we weren't brought up together, so we don't have, um, we have a connection, but you know, sometimes our values are a little bit different, right? But my goal is to be the best person that I could be. And the best person I can be is to allow him to go on his own speed and to grow as he is supposed to grow and evolve. Mm -hmm. So I believe that if you are together, right, you're married and you have a commitment 
God is going to honor that, right? So we're together for a reason. He's going, you know what I'm saying? If it's him, you know, he's more involved in an area and then maybe I'm not that involved. You know, he's more um, laid back um, and I am more vocal, um, but we come together and we figure it out. But really it's not about us changing or trying to come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, it's do you, you grow and you have patience. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then somehow come together and then it's like a, um, like a person who's been together for a long time and who are happy learn that it's kind of like a, a symphony, right? We know there's different instruments, but when you're able to come together, um, and I'll leave you with this, with my husband and I, we think differently. However, I want things fast. He wants things slow. So if we come together, then it's like we're at the right speed because we compromised, but we have the same values. And it's like every time it's like, yeah, that's just what I said. I just want it now. And you want it five years. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it in two. Like, and that's the compromise, you know, mm. so that is my thing about relationships and marriage. Uh, that's a whole I love part it. Right there. And what I got from that was be patient. Yeah. Be yeah. patient. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we don't all... think you know everything, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> What I've heard point. too though, is uh when when you figure out when you start learning these things, the more you know, the more you don't, the more you figure out that you don't know anything. Mm. I think that is usually my problem. Like I, I feel, you know, y'all talk to me about this a lot too, as well. Um, um, as far as me like hosting different things in the morning meetup, like I sometimes I just I kind of question myself because I feel like I don't know enough, and I think that's a, a spot where a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck at. And, mm -hmm. you know, what What do you think about that, about, you know, just not knowing enough to, to where you don't really, you know, um, but not, I don't say believe, but not knowing enough to where you, you don't really push the button because you're like, well, I know enough, but I don't know enough. You know? Mm. And what I usually say is um, belief systems, right? So, you know, how a lot of us are brought up, um, you know, depending on how you brought, you know, were brought up, um, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, so I had a, a lot of lack mentality. So I always believed I didn't have enough, didn't have enough money didn't have this, didn't, didn't have that. So it all comes down to that. Now we all know there's dumb people that know how to make money, right? <laughs> dumb, but they're making all this money. So I believe that we have everything that we need today to get where we need to go today. If you need to learn something new, just acquire the skill and learn it. And you'll implement it when you're supposed to. But you have everything that you need right now in this moment to be successful today. And that, you know, goes to us, um, like during the pandemic when we, you know, everything was shut down. Um, I had a salon at the time, couldn't go to work. Um, but everything I needed, all my books, all my education, my resources were in my computer. Mm. I had stuff in my attic. I'm like, I need this. Stores are shut down, but I would find it in my attic. Mm. That's just how, like, like you have everything. If not, you're supposed to figure out how with the resources you have. No, that's right. That's not right. That's not right. You already have everything. So just everything. take action. Yes. You get started yes. around you. You have resources all yes. around you. It's just about executing and getting started. Executing and starting, right? And sometimes resources are people, other people that you may know. Right. But do it from what you already have. For sure, for sure. So, so thank you so much for that. And also, we wanted to um, we didn't get the chance to talk about the boss mindset. So, I know you help service based entrepreneurs get their self organized um, mm -hmm. using your boss. Uh, let me stop trying to say your X Y Z statement, but tell us a little bit about your boss mindset. Yeah, so the boss mindset is for um service based entrepreneurs, and um, there is a book. Have you read the um the E Myth? 
I know you got oh, it. Oh, that's crazy. I was just writing my notes <laughs> on the e get. <laughs> Wow. Yo, that's crazy because we didn't even talk about that before. I've never mentioned the E-Myth. So look, look at God. Oh, one of my favorite anyway. <laughs> those are one of those books that are a game changer. Um, so that's where I go to boss mindset frameworks. A lot of service-based entrepreneurs go into business for whatever reason, why you left your um, nine to five, maybe. Um, and then, you know, you want to build something on your own. I have made the mistake going into business and then making money and that's it, right? Like we think, okay, I'm making money. That's it. Do one, two, three, and I'll keep money coming. But there, like, you can only do that for so long. So when you do business that way, you just created another job for yourself. Because what happened to me was, I needed to take off. I needed, I wanted to go on vacation. I wanted to go to the dentist. I wanted, I couldn't do anything. I was landlocked. <laughs> couldn't go anywhere because I needed to show up in order to bring in this money. So that's the pitfall that a lot of service-based entrepreneurs get into. And it can be very lucrative money, you know, being having a service-based um, entrepreneur, but you're in jail. Mm. Business. So what I teach is there's levels, as we all know, there's levels to business and learning those core systems that we need to have in place. So there was a time, maybe 20 years ago, they talked us out of doing um, a business plan. You don't need a business plan. You don't need a business plan. You need a business plan. And it's not for everybody, it's for us, it's for you. Mm -hmm. So you have that, that book that keeps you in line on what you're doing, why you're doing it, you know, how long it's going to take us to get to this and, you know, to make this amount of money, what can we do to sustain it? And, um, you know, making sure that we're not duplicating things. And um, that's what I teach, just having organization and doing business differently. Right. So I go from having on the, you know, I'm a solo entrepreneur. Right. So I do everything basically um, by myself other than like an assistant or I have my daughter doing some things, but um, creating a business. And like I said before, passing it off. Yes. Right. We're not meant to do everything. OK. So people say they're a CEO. No, you're not. You're not a CEO if you got to show up every day and do the thing. You know, and one hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. just teaching that mindset because usually a lot of people are working from the help. Um, you know, they're the help in their own business, and it doesn't evolve past that. Absolutely. If you don't have systems, you pretty much winging it, and when you winging it, that's when the burnout really comes. That's when the burnout comes. comes. Yeah. And then you turn around and you realize I haven't got as much done as I would have liked to get done. But that's because I don't have a system. I don't have structure. I don't have a mission mm -hmm. plan. I don't have a business mm -hmm. plan, you know, a vision even for my business. How can I delegate? Who can I delegate to? And when I delegate to this person, do I have everything in line so that they can do it exactly how I did it? So, okay. I mean extremely important um goodness yes tell everyone where they can where they can find you well i make it very easy for people to find me um my website is aliciawells.com um and on instagram everywhere else i think you can find me at um at um coach alicia wells um but yeah just tap in um i am not like a social media um, type of person, but you will see me <laughs> pop up every now and again. But Instagram is my main source um, where I do, you know, most of my lives and posts and things like that. But yes, so right now what you can do is to like book a call, book a call with me. Um, right now I do intensive. So an intensive is 
um, for the entrepreneur that has been in the business for about five years, but really needs to get their core systems in order. So with that, we can do that within eight hours. So what we do is have two four hour sessions and we get to work. So if you need to come with your coffee and your lunch, that's what we do, right? So you fill out an application before and we just have like a work day. And, you know, this is just something that I absolutely love. I love hearing, um, you know, about businesses and I just want people to be organized and to be able to thrive, right? And to be able to take time off and to be clear and not spending unnecessary money on classes and things like that, because you know exactly where you're going. Absolutely. If it does not align with your vision, then, you know, you can make that choice on whether or not, okay, whether I want to, <clears throat> whether I want to move forward with this course or no, it doesn't allow my vision, maybe next time. So absolutely. that's absolutely. Don't you also have an ebook as well? Yes, I do have an ebook and my ebook I wrote many years ago. Um, and it is on basic mindset, um, um, things, um, and it's for life in general. So I do have an ebook and it's called the mindset blueprint. And I will make sure I have that up on my website today. I, I think the link is down, but I'll make sure that's available um, to anyone that wants to just really unravel their mindset and really just take their self to a, you know, to a new level, right? We're always evolving, right? Like, you know, enough to get you through today. <laughs> mm. Love it. Yes. So, right so yeah. Oh, yeah. Execute. Um, we thank you so, so much, Coach Alicia Wills, for coming on the Come Join the High Life podcast. So if you don't know, High Life stands for Hustler, Innovator, Gifted, and Honorable. We high on love, impact, faith, and energy. Which one of those acronyms resonate with you the most? Energy. Absolutely. Energy. And why is that? Because that can shift the room. It can turn it upside down, right? It can take a home from somebody arguing until, you know, you hugging. So if you, if your energy, like, even if you have, like, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, as they say, you can turn that around in, 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 in no time, within seconds, just being grateful. So I would say that is the most important thing for me um, in my, look, I was, I grew up in the hood, right? However, I am far removed from the hood. But if I walk into a room with my energy, I want to flip tables. That's just <laughs> because I am so happy to be here. And um, I just want other people to feel that and then elevate from there, you know? So that's why I like it. <laughs> that's a good answer. That's why we cool now. Because we all, we got good energy. Don't we got some good energy where we come from, girls? Okay. That, that. <laughs> Yes, yes. We come in there raising the energy <laughs> in the morning, like get up. Okay, we got work to do. You feel me? Absolutely. So thank you so much for, for joining us today on the Come Join the Highlight Podcast. This has been another great episode. I can't wait to share this with the people. Um, do something today that your future self will thank you for. And please don't forget to put some respect on your mind. Hey, come join the highlight.